Hey guys, my name is Katarina Lengold. Welcome to my channel. A few days ago, I turned 30 and I spent a few days in Tahoe. It's a beautiful mountain lake at the border of California and Nevada. And I just decided to look and introspect and reflect on the past decade of my life and extract as many lessons that really helped me in my journey. And in the past 10 years, I've done quite a few things. Uh, by that age, I already started my first technology company. I was a student at MIT at the time. I sold that company when I was 23 years old and I became a vice president of an aerospace company. I've been running this company, building the satellite constellation for a few years. Then I started investing in companies. I wrote a book and all of this was a lot of interesting transformations happened in me. The way I looked at the world, the way my relationship with money, with business, with other people changed. And today I want to share those lessons. So I decided to write three insights for three areas of life. First, personal growth, then business slash money. And then the third category is relationships. So let's get started. The first lesson in the personal growth category is about taking responsibility. Everything in my life, I know that for sure right now, is either made happen or let happen by me. It's all my personal responsibility. I either make things happen or let things happen. And you may say, wait, 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 there are so many things that are outside of my control. Yes, they are. But I always can choose how I react to those external circumstances. I can always choose thoughts, words, or actions that I use in order to respond to those situations. So honest look in the mirror. So you look at the situation. This is what it is. And this is how I'm going to react. Take this full responsibility and you will be at the driver's seat of your life. Number two, there is nothing good in trying to be perfect. I really wanted to be perfect most of my life, certainly until my early 20s. I thought that striving for perfection is a good thing. Now I know that perfectionism is actually a survival mechanism that blocks your action because you're waiting for this perfect moment to come and guess what? There are no perfect moments. You're never perfectly ready for anything. What also happens that even if you pushed through this resistance, and you get something done, you always feel not good enough because nothing can be done perfectly. Everything can always be improved. So you can never feel like you're good enough. You've accomplished enough. So it's a very hungry little beast that lives inside ourselves that blocks our action and makes us ruin our belief in, in, in our capacity to change our life and our self-esteem and self-confidence. So perfectionism, no, thank you. Uh, before we move on, um, one of the things about perfectionism that I find extremely interesting is that the best way to fight it is to make small incremental changes, small steps. And I've developed a system and I just want to share it with you. There is a link down below. It's completely free to download a PDF version of my Agile Planner. And you can use this planner to set goals for three week sprints so you can make small imperfect steps towards your goals, towards your habits, and it also includes reflection guide so that you can track your progress and adjust the way you move forward. It's based on agile methodology, which is used by a bunch of technology companies all around the world. And I took this methodology and applied it to personal planning. Highly recommend it. There is a link down below. Check it out. Now let's move on. The third lesson is about lying. Many people think that the cost of lying is that you may be discovered and people will not like you anymore. They will know you're a liar. So that the main kind of cost that you pay is this, this potential of being discovered, right? I actually think that there is a hidden and more important cost of lying. And that comes in the form of self-esteem damage, which happens when you know that you lied about something. So you change your perception of yourself. And it's a really big deal because our relationship with ourselves is critical. We'll talk about that more in a later lessons. And so if we change the way we see ourselves, we lose this foundation for growth. Number two, in addition to self-esteem, you're also sacrificing a lot of energy that you now have to use in order to play those roles and continue this line and the storytelling 
so that you can maintain this image that you created. And what I discovered is that toxicity that lies bring in your life, it actually grows exponentially with time. So the earlier you tell the truth, the less cost you have to pay. So if there are any lies that you're still keeping, maybe it's time to tell people the truth and cut those losses as soon as possible. All right, these were the three lessons in personal growth. Now let's move to career and money. The first one here is about the most luxurious thing that money can buy. No, it's not a yacht, it's not a diamond, it's not the fanciest iPhone, it's freedom. It's freedom to choose what you wanna do, when you wanna do it. And here's the interesting thing, because everybody talks like money is freedom, this is kind of obvious, but what gives you this freedom is money you have not yet spent. So if you spend the money, then they can no longer buy you this freedom. So your savings and your investments are not something that, you know, just gives you support in case of a rainy day. I don't like thinking about rainy day all that much, but it actually gives me choice. What I want to do today? Do I want to work on this project or I want to choose something else that excites me more? This choice is so precious. I think it's the most luxurious, the most valuable thing that money can buy. But in order to buy it, you have to stop buying other things that really don't serve you all that much. And here, um, let's talk about how we can make more money. I find that there are interesting ways how you can maximize the value that you create. And the amount of value that you create actually translates into the amount of money that you make and how you can do it with less effort, right? So there are basically four ways how you can do it. The first one is to use something that you're naturally good at. So when you are naturally good at, let's say, talking to people and persuading them, then being a salesperson will require substantially less effort for you than, for example, to be a lawyer. Number two, you can hire others and learn to delegate some of the things that are fairly easy so that you can expand the amount of time that you have, that you can actually focus on critical things. Number three, you can put capital into what you're doing. So for example, you can invest in advertising and you will have more customers, you will have more money with the same amount of effort. But finally, and this is the interesting one, you can create products that can scale with zero marginal cost. Let me give you an example. In the past, if you printed a book, let's say it cost you $3 to print each book. So if you have 10 books that you sold, you spent $30 to print those books. If you have 100 books printed, then you have $300 that you need to spend in order to print those books. Obviously, there are economies of scale, but anyway, it's not zero, right? You have to pay something in order to produce more items that you sell. But there are nowadays plenty of opportunities to create products with zero marginal cost. For example, apps or eBooks, right? In the case of a printed book, each new copy costs you something. When you're distributing eBooks, your cost of each new copy is zero. Once you've created this eBook, it's there. So one of the great ways how you can scale the amount of money you can make and the impact that you make is either by using your superpowers, by hiring others, by investing more capital, or you can do only some of that, but use as the main leverage the opportunities that exist in the modern economy where you create media content or you create apps that have zero marginal cost. For me, it was kind of a big deal to realize that. The final lesson in the money career category is the things that I decided I want to spend my money on. And in the past, I would buy things that would give me like very short burst of joy. I would feel like such a big deal because I can like purchase this expensive purse. But this joy would disappear and in in those things, they will just be in my uh, walk-in closet and, and I wouldn't really be using it and it won't be generating any joy, any value in my life. So now I try to spend money on things that can generate daily joy. For example, the place where I live, it costs me a substantial amount of money but it brings me joy every single morning when I wake up, look around and think, oh my God, this is the most amazing place to live. And also things that create long-term value like education and healthcare. So those things will improve your life 
going forward. Also, adventures is something that will continue staying in your memory. So you go to a beautiful place, you learn some things there, and you come back and those memories are with you forever. So these, for me, are the best ways to spend money. But obviously, you can also invest money, and then money will be making more money, which is kind of cool, right? So money will be generating more value. And I recommend doing it on a regular basis. Keep it very simple. Invest every month. Even if you don't have much money, start as early as possible. You will benefit tremendously from this practice. Now, before we move to the final three uh, lessons, so we have six and we have three more to go, um, I want to ask you something. If you click the like button here below, more people will discover this video. So hopefully the lessons that I have learned will help more people out there. And I can't really do much. I can only create this content. And now it's up to you to help me share this message. So thank you for being part of our community and clicking the like button. Let's continue. So the seventh lesson, and now we're moving to relationships is about growth and stagnation and how we as social creatures follow others. So homo sapiens have been hardwired by millions of years of evolution to copy each other's behavior. So if you are surrounded by certain people, we'll inevitably copy our tribe members. And it's been, it's been great for millions of years, but in the modern day and age, when we oftentimes surround ourselves with offline and online personalities that may not necessarily be our role models, but we spend a lot of time interacting with them, what happens is that we grow and we stagnate along with them. So I'm trying now to be much more careful with who I surround myself with, not only in the real world, but also in the online world. Who do I read? Who do I follow? because I learned that I will copy, probably subconsciously, a lot of the behavior of those people. So pick wisely who you follow on social media, who you call your friend, who do you spend your time with. Number eight, we have two more to go. Provoke the best in people. We all have good things about ourselves. We have bad qualities. Everybody is a mixed bag. Nobody is 100% good or 100% bad. But there is one thing which is interesting. We display good qualities and bad qualities in different proportions with different people. You probably know that. You might be like 50-50 responsible person, but in some circumstances you act on this good quality and sometimes you be a little bit more chill and maybe more forgetful and less responsible. So what is interesting is that you can provoke others to display their best self when they're working with you, when you're just being your friends. And the best way to do it is to notice and highlight those good qualities in others. So if you say, hey, John, I think people like you, responsible and hardworking, they really do an amazing job. And I'm sure you, you're going to do an amazing job with this project. Thank you so much for doing it. So it's much more likely that John will do a really good job with this. Opposite is also true. So if you highlight negative things about other people, they're much more likely to live up to your perception of them. So keep that in mind the next time you're communicating with others. What side of them do you want to bring to the surface? And the final insight, last but certainly not least, something that I had a long journey to learn about because I believe that for many years, the most re important relationships in my life were maybe relationships with my parents or with my partner or with my friends, my professors, my coworkers. But the number one relationship in the world for each and every one of us is our relationship with ourselves. You cannot love somebody if you don't love yourself. You cannot trust anybody if you're not trusting yourself. And establishing a healthy relationship with yourself is critical. And for many, many years, I've been a really terrible, aggressive, boss for myself who've been you know setting unrealistic goals and then always annoyed with me being not good enough and now i switched to an approach of a loving caring parent so i act as a loving and caring parent for myself and the way it works is that every time i try something new i want to encourage myself to take risk to try new things if i'm going to beat up myself 
for each mistake that I make, I will discourage this behavior. So instead, I celebrate every attempt, even if it follows is followed by failure. And what happens is that when I make a mistake, I give myself warmth. You know, I take myself for a nice walk, take myself to a nice restaurant for a hike. And then I sit down and I analyze what worked, what didn't work. Instead of judging myself, I'm trying to derive lessons from what happened and come up with a plan to try again and to try again and to try again. And each time I make a mistake, I will give myself another warm hug, another opportunity to learn and another opportunity to try. I highly recommend it to you. If you remember just one single thing from this whole video, I hope it's this one lesson. That's it for today, guys. Let's summarize it all real quick. We have discussed nine lessons. The first one was about taking responsibility. Everything in your life you either made happen or let happen. Number two was about perfectionism. There is nothing really positive about perfectionism. It blocks your action, waiting for a perfect moment, and it also makes you judge yourself because nothing is ever good enough. Just drop that. I gave you a link to my planner so you can try making small and perfect steps towards your future. Then we talked about lying and the cost of lying in the form of self-esteem and wasted energy. Then we talked about money and the most luxurious thing that money can buy. By not spending money and having them in savings or investments, you can have the most valuable thing, which is freedom to choose what you want to do and how you want to live. Number five, we talked about money making and how to make more money with less effort. So superpowers, delegating, investing into growth. And also the fourth one, which is super interesting, is creating content, creating software, things which have zero marginal cost. Number six, money should give you prolonged joy and value, not just one-time excitement. So when you're thinking, where do you want to spend money? Think of ways that can give you this prolonged joy or value. Now, we also are also asked you to like this video so that more people can find it. Number seven, um, we talked about social circle and how other people's behavior impact our behavior. We grow and we stagnate following the pattern of others, people we surround ourselves with. This is also true for online presence, so be very careful about who do you want to spend your time with, both online and offline. Number eight, use this strategy to provoke the best qualities in others. Highlight and encourage others to show the best side of themselves by saying, hey, I think you are really good at this. And let me tell you, a lot of people will live up to your perception of them. And number nine, probably the most important one. I almost accidentally said number one because it is number one. Build a high quality relationship with yourself. Become a soft, sweet, loving, compassionate parent who helps the child try new things, gives warmth in case of failure, and also helps explore the mistakes in a non-judgmental way and try again, try again, try again. That's it for today, guys. If it was useful, please join our community here on YouTube. I publish videos every week. So I hope that you will join me for the next video. Here's a like button, here's a subscribe button. So please feel free to click it and I'll see you in the next video.